Welcome back. All right, are you a fan of Barbie? You can't of even see course. you on the screen. This is should have been two shot. All right. A, oh my God. Are you Such gonna go Barbie see the movie? Girl. Of course. Okay. So fans of Barbie, like Sarah Acosta, can know what it's like to be in Barbie's world, a restaurant inspired by the iconic Barbie doll, now open in Chicago, not San Antonio, sadly. <laughs> the pop-up features Barbie's colors, California beach vibes, and a Barbie-themed menu. It is an immersive experience. It comes just ahead of the release of the new Barbie comedy. I didn't know it was comedy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Barbie and Ken. Cafe open through September 15th. Are you going to go to California just to try it? No, or but Chicago, you know sorry. that there is a worldwide paint shortage for the color pink because this movie used so much p uh, pink paint on their set. You know, just when I lost faith in civilization. <laughs> All right. Okay. And just a reminder today, there is a free vaccination clinic for dogs that will end at noon. So the clinic is located at Camargo Park, which is at 5738 west of Highway 90. Vaccines against rabies, parvo, distemper, and more will be available as well as microchip IDs. No appointment is needed, so dog owners just need to bring their IDs with a current address. And all dogs, of course, must be on a leash. All right. Time now. 858, 80 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, starting at 9.01 this morning, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Not a cloud in the sky. And it's really not going to help us later in the day because nope. <laughs> it is going to be hot and humid. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Welcome. Hi. Happy Saturday, June 10th. We've been saying it through the morning. It is finally starting to feel like summer. We've really been lucky with so much rain and really the oh, cooler temps. So spoiled. But Sarah, you said last year we had 5,800 degree days. No, don't even it. say it out loud. We had 58 100 degree <laughs> days last year, but keep in mind that we have yet to hit 100 officially at the airport this this year so far. So I don't think we're going to see 58, but we are going to enter into a stretch here where it's going to be hot. Temperatures are going to push 100. So don't forget to take care of yourself and your pups too. Here's a look at Fido's forecast. Hey, look at Scooby and Sister. Aww. Sarah's pups there. Thanks for sending that in. I love how Sister's smiling directly at the camera there. And then this is Penelope. This is uh, our uh, coworker, Mary Claire's dog. She's super nice. She's getting old. So take a look at Penelope. Just remember to take care of your pups. If you want to, you can scan this QR code there and then you can post a picture of your pups as well on KSAT Connect. By the way, here's a look at the forecast for the day today. It's going to become pretty hot. Temperatures are going to be climbing to near 98 degrees for the afternoon high this afternoon. It'll feel like it's 100 to 105 in San Antonio. So be very careful and make sure to uh, walk your dogs uh, on the grass if you have to walk them this afternoon. Otherwise, take a look at the radar. We've got a few storms uh, up in Uvalde, uh, pardon me, in Valverde County, and then an isolated shower in Uvalde County. This is heading towards San Antonio here. I think there could be a moment, a brief moment of sprinkles around San Antonio between about 10, 1030. But otherwise, the biggest story this weekend is going to be the heat, the high temperature today should be 98. It'll feel like 102 to 107 both today and tomorrow. But yes, there is a chance that a few lucky folks will get a stray shower, a stray storm today. Only 10% chance tomorrow, though, no chance for storms. I'll be talking more in depth about the radar coming up in a moment. But first, I want to give you the pollen count for the day. It looks OK. Molds, grass and pigweed are all low. Now, more details on the radar and when we will see 100 degrees officially coming up in just a bit. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. Today is the day that some people in and around San Antonio will decide who will represent them. There are runoff elections in two different city council districts. The polls opened two hours ago. Trina Weber joining us live in City Council District 7, a polling place near Ingram and Benrus Boulevard. So, Katrina, have you seen a lot of voters out there? Well, I'll tell you what, a half hour has made a difference. We went from just one voter to several. Now, if you take a look at the parking lot, in addition to the three cars we pointed out earlier that belong to the poll workers, we have several more uh, that you can see in your camera shot. Now, there's a lot at stake for voters here uh, in District 7, as well as in District 1, which includes the downtown area. People will be casting their ballots in both of those districts to decide who represents them on the San Antonio City Council. In District 1, the current councilman, and Mario Bravo will try to fend off his challenger, Suk Kaur. 
And both of them are vying to represent that central area of the city, downtown and the area just north of it. Here in District 7, the race is between Marina Alderetti Gavito and Dan Rossiter. And no matter who wins here, voters will have a new representative for uh, City Council District 7. Voters can cast their ballots up until 7 o'clock tonight. And for a list of polling locations, you can head over to our website, ksat.com. You can also find the results later tonight of these two races on our website, as well as on the night beat. That's uh, at 10 o'clock tonight. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And as Katrina just mentioned, our website is the best place for everything you need to know before you head to the polls. You can check out preview stories we have done on all the candidates. Just look for this story on our homepage. Two arrests in two days. San Antonio police say that these arrests connected to that north side drive-by shooting. That shooting that ended with a two-year-old shot and killed last month. As John Paul Barajas reports, detectives say their work is still not done. Anything you want to say for yourself or your family? Yes, sir. I'm innocent. Two suspects both claiming they're innocent. But according to San Antonio police, 37-year-old Anthony Ares Mendez organized the May 8th drive-by shooting that killed two-year-old Mackenzie Hernandez Garcia. Why are you in handcuffs? Um, uh, because supposedly they uh, allegations. Ares Mendez is accused of calling for a hit on the home in the 100 block of Future Drive on the north side. After he got into an incident with the person police say was the intended target. This all resulted from a assault that took place before the shooting. Um, because of an assault that took place, uh, Mr. Ares Mendez organized the shooting to occur to target a specific individual. SAPD didn't tell us who that person is, but did say he lived at the home where the little girl was killed. Police also think Ares Mendez paid 17-year-old Darian Turner, the suspected shooter, an unknown amount to carry out the drive-by. And even though Ares Mendez says he's innocent, he still apologized for what happened. Mackenzie Garcia is the name of the two-year-old that was killed. Do you have anything you want to say to her family? I'm sorry that 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 happened and uh you know what i mean uh, i don't understand why why i'm involved but like i said uh sorry for everything that that they did john paul barajas ksat 12 news all right now both suspects facing capital murder charges investigators think they'll arrest more people regarding this case they think the alleged shooter was a passenger in the vehicle where the shots came from so that could mean police are also still looking for the driver Bear County leaders want to promote gun safety. The commissioner's court approving giving 4,000 portable handgun safes and 1,000 cable locks to people across Bear County for free. One household can get a safe and a gun lock. You need to register in advance, though. We have that link along with all the pickup locations posted right now. Just head to ksat.com. Well, now to an update to the construction projects on St. Mary Street. So if you're going to be in the area this weekend, expect some on and off delays. All right, that's because the city of San Antonio says crews are laying down the final layer of asphalt. They're starting tomorrow, 7 o'clock, intersection of North St. Mary's and Dewey Place. Then they're going to be moving north with rolling movement through overnight. So the work is scheduled to go through Wednesday. Two-way traffic will be open each morning at 6 a.m. during the work. So is this it? Is this I'm it assuming. says final, but it, it's been years in the making. We were talking about this project, I want to say, like four years ago. Oh, my gosh. I feel like my entire time living here in San Antonio, it's been going on. I feel for the business owners. Oh, because my gosh. And the residents in that neighborhood, I, too. All right. Time now, 9.08, 81 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up. It's been horrible. Uh, we're both covered in bites right now. All the rain means mosquitoes, and we mean a lot of them. After the break, some simple things you can do to keep those pesky pests away. And if you and the family are out and about today, some simple tips could do you some handy work today because we know a lot of people are going to be hanging out by the pool, going to the lake, floating down the river. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for what you can expect. Well, it's one of the downsides of seeing a healthy amount of rain. Unfortunately, we're talking about mosquitoes, and right now they're all over San Antonio. All right, usually find mosquitoes wherever they're standing water. We're talking ponds, puddles, even wet soil. So how do you keep them away? Metro Health shares a few simple tips. At your home, you can basically eliminate stagnant water, uh, like on toys, barrels, buckets, anything like that. Uh, basically, that eliminates the reading ground for the mosquitoes. 
So those are just a few tips to keep mosquitoes from swarming your home. We have a list of other tips to help you avoid those mosquitoes. Head to ksat.com. Sarah, I really find uh, in my garden. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of mosquitoes that moisture in the soil. That makes sense. And you know, it is summer. So if you're headed outdoors for fun, considering sharing photos or videos with your local community on KSAC Connect, we might use them for stories online or on TV. Just visit KSAC Connect computer, phone, app. You can also download the KSAC Weather Authority app for regular access to KSAC Connect. We have all the information how to do so on KSAT.com. We've gotten some pictures through the morning of some beautiful dogs, to be honest. Sarah Costa shared a picture of her dog. Yeah. Always uploading to Thanks KSAT for Connect. Thanks doing that. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, if you want to, you can do that on KSAT Connect. That would be great. Now, guys, I, it is going to be a hot and humid day. Okay, but the curveball mm. is that a few will get some isolated showers and maybe even an isolated storm. So that's the curveball. Let's start with the curveball. Take a look at the radar right now. You can see that there are a few showers and storms west of San Antonio right now, developing out near Eagle Pass, near Del Rio. We've also got a shower in uh, parts of Yavaldi County starting to move into Medina County. More on that in a bit. But first, I want to show you that near Carissa Springs, a couple flashes of lightning near Eagle Pass, too. And just over the border here, just to the west of Del Rio, we've got a cluster of storms moving uh, eastward. So we're going to see if that can hold on for Del Rio itself. Uh, so you might see a brief period here of lightning and thunder. Otherwise, again, there is a shower that's moving east into Medina County near Sabinal Concan. This is some very light rain. So if this can hold together and make it to San Antonio, it really would only be a brief time of sprinkles here, but it could make it to the western part of the county by about 10 o'clock, central part of the county by 1045, and out into Guadalupe County by about 1130, but it may just dissipate completely before it even makes it to San Antonio. So we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, that is just adding a little bit of cloud cover, which is nice because the longer we can keep away the sun, uh, the longer we can prevent temperatures from soaring, but they will soar regardless today. A high temperature of 98 and then look ahead. Remember that phrase, a shower a day keeps 100 away? Well, in the days ahead, we're not going to have any showers. And so 100's going to, uh, we're gonna probably see our first triple digit day here by the middle of this upcoming week. And then because we've seen rain, we've got high humidity out there. The heat index is gonna be anywhere from 100 to 107 in the coming days as well. Right now at the airport, we're seeing some of those clouds from that shower out west move overhead. It's mostly cloudy at 81. In fact, at the very top of your screen here, you can see those clouds starting to move in a little bit around uh, 410 area where the shot is taken. And here on the uh, satellite and temperatures, you can see those clouds moving in from the west here. So we are going to have a brief period of time here of partly cloudy skies as these showers try to make it eastward. But into the afternoon, it's going to be mostly sunny and humid. Here's a look at those dew points. Dew points are in the low 70s. That's at the absolute top of the scale. Very humid outside, oppressively so. And as we look at the weather setup, there's a dry line out in West Texas separating the dry West uh, Texas air from the rich Gulf of Mexico humidity around central Texas. It's areas north of San Antonio up toward the Dallas Fort Worth area that have the biggest risk for severe weather today. I know that uh a lot of people might be traveling this weekend, so numerous severe storms are expected from Dallas to Waco to Shreveport to Lufkin. We're going to be on the tail end of that system if a storm can pop this afternoon, and that's a big if it could become severe with large hail, but we are on the tail end of that risk. Otherwise, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that it's going to be hot and humid unless you're lucky and get a sprinkle this morning hot and humid regardless with the heaviest of the storms up near Waco down toward Austin and then maybe a small chance for a stray thunderstorm this afternoon. 98 in San Antonio, 97 in New Braunfels, 99 in Castroville and in Uvalde. It'll be 98 in Floresville, 98 in Nixon, 96 in Kerrville and 96 in Gonzalez. The average high is 92, but watch this. 
The high humidity is going to make it feel like it's 100 in San Antonio, even if the thermometer doesn't reach 100 degrees. And feeling anywhere from 100 to 104, especially closer to the coast, that's where that high humidity will be highest. So looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, again, 10% chance for a stray sprinkle right now with uh, some partly cloudy skies, but into the afternoon it'll be mostly sunny, 98 degrees, and again, only a measly 10% chance for a stray storm this afternoon. South winds at at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. By the way, by 9 p.m. it's still going to be near 90 degrees. Yep, it's that time of year or even the evening is toasty. And then we turn off rain chances completely in the days ahead. 99 on Sunday, close to 100 by Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll show more of those uh, Fido forecast pup picks coming up in just a bit. All Thank right. you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So that means people still have time to send them in. Absolutely. All I'll right. show them close to 930. KSAC Connect. Time now, 918, 82 degrees. So important news if you're getting ready to go shopping after oh. the break. What you need to know about the popular buy now, pay later apps. Have you gotten your uh, Father's Day gift yet? I did. Good for you. I know. All right, let's take a look at those lotto Have tickets. You? Let's take a look at those lotto <laughs> numbers. We're going to start off with pick three. 223, two, Fireball 7, Daily 4, 6039, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 9, 20, 24, 30, 35. Max, you should buy your dad a lotto ticket. Oh, look at that. Right? This one, the Mega Million jackpot, over 200 million right now. 3, 19, 53, 60, 68, Mega Ball 13, Mega Player 3. Good morning and welcome back. Buy now, pay later. You see that option a lot when you check out from online shopping. Even restaurants, grocery stores. They're offering payment plans. But are these services safe? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on what to know before you buy now, but pay later. With just a few clicks, you can buy something but spread out the payments, typically four payments over several weeks or months, and you pay no interest. Sounds great, which may explain why buy now, pay later apps are becoming popular. A recent survey found 21% of Americans said they'd used buy now, pay later at least once. But what about the fine print? This question's about these loans lack of consumer protections. So we tested some of them to see how safe they really are for consumers. Consumer Reports analyzed eight popular buy now, pay later apps for safety, privacy, and transparency. PayPal came out on top, scoring 89 out of 100 and getting high marks for fraud protection and offering good security practices. Some others leave a lot to be desired. PerPay and Zilch scored lowest, doing poorly in the privacy control tests. And there's more. Our results found some troubling issues, like not all of them clearly disclose loan fees. She suggests taking screenshots of each loan term page before you hit accept. This could help you if you need customer service in the future. Fraud and ID theft are also concerns. You should make it a habit to regularly check your buy now, pay later account for fraudulent charges and to review all transaction and email notifications from your loan provider. If for some reason you can't make a payment, contact the company beforehand because you might be able to reschedule it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, time now, 923, 82 degrees. Coming up later on Texas East, David Elder heads to Houston to try an interesting Ooh. take on steak and eggs. Can't go wrong with steak and no, eggs, Max. Breakfast of champions right there. No, starving. Okay. First one that's in front of me, steak and eggs. Well, we take like a very uh, different approach to steak and eggs. We serve the uh, ribeye uh, marinated in a bunch of uh, nice oh. different uh, sauces. So oh. that it's like a balance of sweet, salty. And then we actually serve it with pate, some French bread, a fried egg, some Maggi sauce. So we shave a little bit of raclette cheese on top to add even yes. more uh, unctuousness. It's, to it's so gooey. I'm over here like trying to get a little piece of it. It's just so gooey. This is the steak and eggs out here, and that's the bite. Mm. Wow. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. It is 9.31, it is June 10th, and it is hot out there already. Oh my gosh, it's like that searing heat, like it, where it hits the back of your neck because of the humidity. I want to go back to what you said at 6 a.m. What did it feel like? 
where you're searing a steak. A searing a steak on the back of your neck. That's what I felt like this <sighs> morning. When Spivey, I... Is that a new one for you too? I don't know. My yeah. mind's a weird and creative place. You can always <laughs> count on Sarah Costa to come up with unique meteorological terms. So yes, it's a, it's a steak searing day out there. All right. Hey, but I did ask for your pictures of your pups earlier. Just to remind everyone, take care of your pups with this heat. This is Sophia and Cha-Cha with matching outfits. This is Jagger. Here we've got Oliver and Sergio staying inside and keeping cool. Tongue out, already ready to keep cool. Then we got some twins here. Newest family members, Kuda and Marlon, three months old. And then this is Loyal Weekend viewer, Patty Acosta's Heidi, hanging out by the pool to avoid the heat. Acosta, you may notice the name there. All right, and then I love this, our happy boy, Pitt Rottweiler mix named Gambit. Awesome, thank you everyone for setting in your pictures. Something to keep in mind is that the pollen count looks good today. There's only three allergens out there, molds, grass, and pigweed, they're all low, that is good news. Also, there's a bit of a curveball to the forecast today. It is gonna be hot and humid in San Antonio, but you look out to the west and you can see there's a few storms, even near Del Rio right now, some storms have made it across the border. Border. In Eagle Pass, we've got some light rain showers as well. A flash of lightning down near Catula. Even an area of showers right near Hondo. This is very light rain moving through Hondo. Could make it to some neighborhoods in San Antonio in the form of sprinkles. But all, all in all, the chance for rain is only 10%. The biggest thing today is going to be the heat. By noon, we're already going to be at 90 degrees. And then in the afternoon, 98 for the high at 4 or 5 p.m. It's going to feel a lot hotter than that, though, with the humidity. Humidity. And then finally, even this evening, we'll still be near 90 degrees by 9 p.m. Throughout the day today, there is that 10% chance for a stray shower or storm, especially out west and especially in the hill country. But otherwise, it's going to be very humid with a heat index of 102 to 107, not only today, but for most of the upcoming week, too. It'll stay hot tomorrow. The rain chances will go away completely and we'll be in the middle of a heat wave. In fact, we'll likely see our first 100 degree day of the year by the middle of the week. Details and an updated look at the radar coming up. Max. Thank you, Sarah. An argument turns deadly overnight. San Antonio police say one man was shot and killed, but they do have a suspect in custody. Katrina Weber is at public safety headquarters and tells us police are hoping to get some answers from him there. Detectives seem to have a lot of questions about exactly what led to this. They told us they're not sure if there was just an argument or if things actually turned physical before the shooting. Now, they got the call right around midnight and found both men outside a home on Shady Grove Drive. That's on the west side, not far from Joint Base Lackland. The man who was shot and killed was 23 years old. Police say he got into an argument with a 44-year-old man who then fired the shots. And that victim was hit in his upper body several times. He died at the scene. Now, when we last talked to police, it wasn't clear whether they actually planned to file charges against that suspect. They say that they did want to question him. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder, today is election day for two runoff races, District 1 and 7. So right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know about heading to the polls. Just look for this story on your homepage. All right, a lot of morning headlines this morning. We're going to start in San Francisco. At least nine people in the hospital after a shooting yesterday. Now, police are calling the shooting targeted and isolated. We're keeping an eye on this developing story. Make sure to stay with us through the morning, through the afternoon, on air and online. We do expect a lot more details throughout the day. Four children who have not been seen for more than 40 days have been rescued from the jungle in Colombia. So the children were found alive in the country's south part of the jungle more than five weeks after their plane crashed. Video sh shared by the Colombian Air Force show military pulling the children in from that dramatic rescue. There are four siblings ages 9, 13, 4, and a one-year-old child and they are all recovering at this point. It really is such a happy ending to what otherwise would be right. such a terrifying story. All right, we've been talking about how it is summer, it is hot out there, and your morning consumer news, a lot of summertime, well, that means some people going to camp. It also means it can cost parents 
Pretty penny. Well, some of my girlfriends were telling me about the prices of summer camp. So ABC's Whit Johnson has some ways to make it more affordable. As captured in the classic film, The Parent Trap, it's that time of year again for summer camp. But now it's more expensive than ever. And even if families can afford it, they may face limited availability. Demand is really up. That means that it could be difficult to find the camp that you're looking for for your child. But it's not too late. But as demand increases, so does the cost. The average summer camp is about $180 a day and nearly $450 a day for sleepaway camp. Just last year, prices increased by 35% compared to the previous year. And for parents like Lindsay Hunter, just getting their kids in is proving to be a challenge. We're trying to give our kids these opportunities to um, have fun in the summer, to be enriched in the summer, to get off our backs in the summer but it comes at a big price and it's a price that my family can't really afford. So how can parents get their kids to camp without breaking the bank? First, the American Camp Association's Find a Camp tool allows parents to search the nation some 15,000 camps. Parents can also ask questions about scholarships, financial aid, and discounts for multiple children. One change this year, an increase of camps offering buy now, pay later payment services for more expensive activities. You'll commit to a payment schedule and you won't have to put all the money out up front. Next, refer a friend. If your child has been going to a camp for several years that you absolutely love, go ahead and recommend that camp to everyone you know. Very often, camps will offer a discount to referring families. Then consider staying put. You will definitely get a discount for signing up for multiple weeks at one camp rather than signing up for one or two weeks at a bunch of different camps. And finally, think local. You might find several low cost or free alternatives through your local library, museum or parks and recreation department. I wasn't aware that there were so many resources in my city until another parent said, you know, hey, did you know that the park district does this or the library does that? And that was Whit Johnson reporting. So museum camps have been picking up in popularity. Most are free and offered at low cost. And it's never too early to start thinking about savings for next summer. So if you register for next year's camp at the end of this summer, you may find discounts for signing up early. All right, speaking of museums, the Duseum inviting guests to their opening of the new summer exhibition called Dream Tomorrow Today. And it's open until September 24th. Museum located 2800 block of Broadway, the new exhibition is described as an immersive experience. Guests can build, create, even design your own city. And I gotta say, big fan of the museum. It's really cool. And if you have kids, you wanna stay out of the heat today, it's a great place to go. Absolutely. Right, no so mosquitoes either. No mosquito. Well, knock on wood, because there's even mosquitoes in the studio. Don't leave the door open. Time now, 939, 82 degrees. <laughs> hey, I did not find leave you. the door open. <laughs> Somebody did, and I got bit. All right, so here's a look at what's coming up next. We have floats like Elton John. We have Lady Gaga. So the Philip Poe folks decorated themselves. The, the floats are decorated, and people will be in costumes to reflect the icon represented on that float. So happening today, a celebration of inclusion after the break, a look ahead to the Pride River Parade that will be taking over downtown. Speaking of downtown, let's take a live look out there. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. We know a lot of people are out and about for the River Parade today or really headed by the river, going to float down the river, not the San Antonio River, probably the Guadalupe, going to the pool, going to the lake. What's it going to be like? How hot is it going to get? We'll be right back. community. Uh, one thing we support is being diverse and inclusive in the community so that everyone feels comfortable coming to our events. Everyone feels comfortable coming to San Antonio. All right. In just a few hours, the second annual Bud Light Pride River Parade kicking off downtown. So the parade will have more than 19 different floats along the San Antonio River Walk with two showings. The first one on the downtown reach part of the San Antonio River Walk will be from 4 to 5 p.m. and will serve as the closing event for the celebration festival at La Vita. The second presentation will be the River Walk Museum reach area and is from 7 to 8 p.m. This will provide an additional opportunity for the community to enjoy the parade. All right, it also serves as a way for the city to recognize our diverse community. We have all the details right now.
head to ksat.com. We also have a full list of all the entertainers. So, Sarah Spiva, will there be any reprieve from the heat? You know, there is a curveball in today's forecast. An isolated shower or storm is possible, but generally it's just going to be hot and humid for all mm. folks out there uh, today. If you're trying to enjoy San Antonio or any kind of outdoor activities, just be prepared for the heat. First, so let us talk about that curveball out west toward Del Rio right now. There's some storms ongoing. If you're joining us from Del Rio and Valverde County, uh, these are just your run of the mill thunderstorms. There's no severe weather with these. Just a few flashes of lightning, brief periods of heavy downpours here uh, moving through Del Rio along 79 toward Brackettville. Brackettville, this will be to your doorstep fairly shortly here. Uh, we can actually put a track on this. It's moving to the east at about 35 miles per hour, so fairly quickly. It'll be near Brackettville by about 1010, so in the next 25 minutes or so, could be close to Klein by about 1045. Now, this storm system, as it moves to the east, is going to be weakening quite a bit. There's a good chance that it's going to fall apart. There was a shower that was moving through uh, Hondo right now, but it's weakening even more as it's moving towards San Antonio, probably not even going to be moving through San Antonio at all. But if this cluster of storms can hold together, at least the energy from the storms can hold together, it'll make it to the Uvalde area by about 11 o'clock toward Hondo by about 1230. And if it can make it into Southern Bear County, it would be there by about 145 this afternoon. And again, that is a big if this thing may fall apart completely before even making it there. You can also see there's some showers near Eagle Pass and down near Catula too. So that's the curveball in the forecast. It's also allowing for a few more clouds to be moving into San Antonio. There's that shower that fell apart. Uh, there's a few wispy cirrus clouds around the Alamo City. Mostly cloudy skies for Bandera and Kerrville right now. This is good because the clouds are going to prevent temperatures from soaring super quickly, although it's still going to generally be a hot day. 82 at Stinson already, 82 in New Bradfuls, 82 in Kerrville and 81 in Comfort. Again, the heat is the biggest story in spite of the fact that there's a couple of showers out west. We'll be at 99 tomorrow, 99 on Monday, and we're probably going to see our first 100 degree day by the middle of this upcoming week. It's not as bad as last year, though. Remember last year we had 58 100 degree days. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be that hot this summer, but it's about time for us to see that first triple digit day. Again, you can see those showers a little bit better here as we zoom out a little more. Uh, but this is a look at the entire weather setup. There's a bit of a short wave in the atmosphere with a dry line in West Texas. Honestly, though, the the area that's going to be under the gun for the most severe weather today is up north toward Dallas, Waco, Lufkin out in northeast Texas uh, in Texarkana. Take a look at the future cast by about 4 or 5 p.m. If you're traveling up to Dallas or have friends and family in Dallas, they're going to be under the gun for severe weather from about 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Again, down to Waco, out toward Lufkin, Shreveport. Those areas will be on the tail end of things. I think, uh, again, other than a couple of stray showers this morning, it is mainly just going to be a hot and humid day with a high right near 100 degrees in San Antonio. It's going to be 98 degrees this afternoon. I think we'll avoid seeing our first 100 degree day today, but it's inevitable at this point that later on this week we'll see 100. It will be 100 in Del Rio, 103 in Catula, 93 in Beeville, 96 in Beeville rather, 96 in Canyon Lake, and 96 in Kerrville. But with the high heat index, with the high humidity, that means a high heat index. So it's going to feel like it's 100, even if the mercury doesn't actually reach 100. By the way, thermometers don't contain mercury anymore. That's just an old saying. In your case, that uh, 12 hour forecast looking ahead 90 degrees by noon, partly cloudy out there right now. A little bit more sunshine in the afternoon, 98 for the high 4 or 5 p.m. Again, a 10% chance for a stray storm is possible. We'll keep an eye on the radar for you. Just do your best to try to stay cool. We'll still be near 90 degrees by 9 p.m. Other than that 10% chance today, we turn off the tap completely in the coming days. We'll be steadily rising to 100. It'll feel like 102 to 107 just about every single day. Wednesday's flag day. That's what that American flag is there for. And then we'll be up to 102 by Thursday and Friday, Max and Sarah. So for those going down to the parade this evening, make sure you bring lots of mosquito spray. I think that's great advice because, yeah, it's the, a lot of recent rains have really made those mosquitoes pop out. Lots of water. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 949, 83 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next.
Coming up, we're taking you backstage for Footloose the Musical, where there's dancing, singing, and fun for the whole family. It's time to kick off your Sunday shoes and dance along with Footloose as the musical hits the stage. Uh, you can catch it at the Russell Rogers Theater, the Public Theater, and there are several classic songs to enjoy. KSAT producer Priscilla Caraman takes us backstage for a preview. <laughs> If you're looking for something to do with the family, Footloose the Musical is playing right now at the Public Theater of San Antonio. This is the perfect show for the summer because there are a lot of fun songs that everyone's familiar with. A few are Let's Hear It For The Boy, my personal favorite, Holding Out For A Hero, Almost Paradise. So if you want to listen to some good familiar jams, this is the musical for you. I think one of the biggest takeaways is no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what you look like, we all have the human experience in common, right? We, we all experience trauma, we all experience so many things. And if people will just take the time to listen and to try to understand each other, we'll realize that there's a lot more that we have in common than we realize. The people who know the classic film will definitely recognize it. It is very footloose, if you will. Um, and the people who are coming to see it now, I always say this is a great first show to come see theater if you've never seen it uh, because of the singing and dancing. Also, what we do is the stage production actually gives you a picture of how the no dance ordinance came to be. So unlike the film, you don't really get that as much, but the stage production actually shows you that. Footloose the Musical runs June 9th through the 25th. For ticket information, you can head to ksat.com. And guess what? There's a group discount for eight or more. Priscilla Caraman, KSAT 12 News. Now to Brooksville, Florida, and a story that's sure to put a smile on your face this morning. Meet five-year-old Kaysen Johns. He and his family, they had to move away. But his classmates never forgot him. At the end of this school year, his teachers had an idea for him to come back for a special visit. <laughs> and this is the moment the kindergartners, making it to the end of their school year, got to see their friend again. The hugs are so cozy. I get to see all of my friends. Aren't children just so pure? So cute. Oh, love this. Kaysen and his friends learning a valuable lesson about the power of friendship. Oh, I love that. So cute. All right, time now, 9.55, already 84 degrees. Coming up tomorrow on Leading SA. All right, we're going to have Jim Pershbach, President and CEO of Port San Antonio, basically talking about how they've grown exponentially over the last five years. A lot on the horizon, a lot of technology being built right here in the Alamo City. And what could come next? Before we head to break, we want to wish a very happy birthday to one of our own here at KSAT. This is Emily Allen. She is our Nightbeat executive producer. Today is her birthday. Happy half birth, half, half 30s, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning and welcome back. All right, we are starting this morning off with a live look out at the roadways. We know a lot of people out and about today. We know that it is a summer weekend in San Antonio and people head to their pool, head to the lake, head to the river, gonna go float down the river. Not the San Antonio River. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Very <laughs> ill-advised. I think it actually it it's, is a crime to right, jump into the river. So right. don't do that. Don't do that. But Sarah Spivey, I know a lot of people are going to be wanting to cool it off today. Yeah, it's going to be a hot one. I mean, we're already at 85 degrees outside right now. There are some clouds moving in from the west from some storms that have developed out uh, toward Del Rio. Uh, and you can see those storms right here on the radar. Uh, again, just a few showers and storms out there right now. By the time they'll try to make it to San Antonio, it'll probably be closer to one o'clock, but they may weaken significantly or even just fall apart completely. So keep that in mind if you have plans today. Again, a few of these storms have developed out near Del Rio and Brackettville. They've got a long journey before they can make it to San Antonio, uh, but we will carry a 10% chance for that to happen. It'll be 90 degrees at noon and then the afternoon. That's when the heat really cranks up 98 at 4 or 5 p.m. Heat index value near to 100 to 105. 
5. And then looking at tonight, it's still going to be 90 degrees by 9 p.m. So a hot weekend forecast. Find a pool, find a way to stay cool. Uh, even hotter tomorrow by a degree or two and no chance for rain tomorrow. In the pollen count today, we've got molds, grass, and pigweed low, so not too bad in the pollen count. And then we've avoided it for a while, but our first real mm. heat wave of the summer, next seven days, I mean, look at this. We're going to be getting to those triple digits really soon. Stay indoors, maybe. Or stay outside if by a body of water. Just make sure to stay hydrated. And mosquito spray. Yep. Keep your doors closed. Have a great rest <laughs> of your day. Hey, Texas Eats is next.